Praise for him again. Who in here, um, as I'm getting ready to read First Peter, who in here is in a trial? You're in a test or you're going through something right now that's not making sense. Raise your hand. If you're into something right now that you're going through and you're like, God, why am I going through this? Raise your hand if that's you. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm, in, I'm talking to the right people. So my, I have an assignment to try to explain this for you. <laughs> so you can leave here a lot encouraged. Because you will actually leave with a different perspective about what you are going through. So what I'm going to do, we're going to read the scripture. I'm going to let you have a seat. And then we are going to dive in into understanding why you are going through what you are going through. Amen. So, God, we thank you so much as we read First Peter. We thank you, God, for letting your word jump off the pages for us. We thank you so much, Father, for revealing your truth to us. We love you. We praise you, God, because, Father, we know that you have given us these scriptures, Lord God, to encourage our hearts for the edifying of our lives and our walk with you. So, Father, I'm asking you right now, don't let one person leave here today not blessed with this word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. And it reads, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice. I was waiting to hear somebody rejoice right there. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. Lord Jesus. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Look at your neighbor and say, I am not ashamed. <laughs> but let him glorify God on this behalf. I want you to look at somebody. You got to smile, though. You got to smile. Show them all the whites in your mouth. If you got 32, 15, or two. <laughs> Show them whatever you got in there. <laughs> That's surviving. <laughs> and look at them and say, you are on the team. Come on, you got to say it one more time. You got to smile. You got to make them feel happy about being on the team. Look at them and say, you are on the team. Hey, Amen. Please take your seat. <laughs> oh. So we're going to go back to uh, verse 12. Now, today there's going to be some scriptures, so I hope you have your Bibles. Please take notes. Um, again, I don't believe in, um, I don't want to be the, the one who will just give you a, a theme and a scripture, and then I got to do all the work as far as knowing the scriptures. I need you to know that this stuff is in the Bible. Because if it's not in there, I need to sit down. <laughs> I have to make sure that what I am saying is in here. So I need, the pr I need the word of God to back everything of what I'm sharing about. And one of the things that, um, you know, I must admit, I am a football fanatic. I love football. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm fasting and praying right now that the Buffalo Bills go win this year. Hey, shama, shama, shama. <laughs> I'm on my knees every day ahead of time. You know, like we praise them in advance. I'm praising them in a Lord Jesus, please. But I like football for not because, uh, cause we all know it's just a simple game where you got this big piece of leather being thrown around. But the thing I like about the game is the principles behind it is what I enjoy about it. One of the things I enjoy about the game is that if you get on the team, you are not excused from certain things. When you're on that team, everybody on the team have to do certain things in order to play on Sunday. 
So during the week, um, when, when the coach calls the team players out to the field, the whole team has to do laps. Even the big people, the linebackers, the ones who weigh 330 pounds and they're protecting the quarterback, they got to do their laps too. So they're not excused from certain disciplines and certain things that happen to them because they're on the team as other players who may run much faster. But when they get on the field, they all play different positions. But in practice, they all got to do the same thing. So one of the things I love about football is that I look at things like that. I look at the thing about how team, the team members, how certain things that, again, all the team members do. So the reason why I want to share that you're on the team is because First Peter shows us some things that comes to everybody who's on Team Jesus. <laughs> if you're on Team Jesus, you better look at First Peter chapter 4 and embrace it because it's coming with the territory. It's not something that you can pray against. You can't get on the football team and say, Coach, um, I, I know I'm going to be good on Sunday, but can I please not do these 50 push-ups? That coach will look at you and say, well, you ain't going to be equipped for what you want to do on Sunday if you don't do these 50 push-ups. So you have to do the push-ups so you can do the performance. So what First Peter does, First Peter is going to be showing us certain things that is going to happen to everybody who is on Team Jesus. Now, the first thing I want to show you, my assignment today is to show you four different things that all of us in here is going to be experiencing. The thing I love about First Peter is that he ends it with encouragement. He doesn't give us this scripture and then says, now I want you to cry and go and start to tell your neighbor all the things you're going through. What he does is he tells us that you're going to get hit, you're going to get tackled, you may even get punched to the face, you may even break an ankle every now and then, but he said, but don't worry about that, you're still on the team. So he ends it with this encouragement. What I have learned, the reason why I said to you earlier, I wish somebody would have told me this, is because I remember when I became a Christian, I immediately got attacked. It was like I got saved today, and the next day I felt like I went through hell which made me want to go back this way because <laughs> I'm like, did I do something wrong? You know, I was hearing stuff like, oh, if you give your life to Jesus, uh, you know, everything will be all right. I'm, I, I was like, oh, that's what I want, everything to be all right. So when I got saved, everything wasn't all right. So I said either the preacher lying because <laughs> this stuff is don't make, it just seemed like all oh, hell broke loose. My depression started after salvation. I'm like, come on. That should have been before salvation, right? Wouldn't y'all agree that if I'm not a Christian, shouldn't I be depressed before? But before, I was having fun. I was partying in the clubs, having a good time. And then I get saved and I go through depression. I'm like, what happened? And it's because somebody didn't tell me this. If they would have just told me this, I would have went in with a smile. Just like, um, let, me, let me use an example. I'll, I'll show you the power of understanding. Understanding is so powerful. Um, it's the same thing when it comes to football. Have you ever seen like when the guys do good and the guy make a touchdown, he cuts on the sideline and all the guys smack him in the butt. Hey, hey, hey good job. Right? Now, the reason why the guy who's getting smacked the reason why he ain't punching nobody is because he understands that smack is a good smack. Now, you just, now I guarantee if any of y'all walk out that door and 10 strangers come and smack you on your butt and say, you're going you to turn around with a different spirit. <laughs> and it's because, now watch this, the smack is the same, but the understanding behind the smack makes you endure it. Y'all understand that, right? The understanding of this is going to make you look at your trial and test so much different because you think something is wrong and he's telling you something is right for going through. So let's read this. Watch. He says, beloved, so you are the beloved. Think it not strange. He's saying, stop complaining that something is not going your way. That's number one. Now look, now this is where it gets deep. He says, concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. Now look what he says. As though something crazy happened. He says, 
you're looking at this fiery trial like something crazy is happening to you. Now, verse 13 is where I got happy. Look at verse 13. Look what he says in verse 13. But rejoice. So watch this. Raise your hand and gear if you're going through a test or a trial. What does verse 13 tell us to do then? So show me what that looked like. Now, this is what makes you look different from the sinner. We supposed to do what you just did when hell happens. They go down and try to kill somebody when that happens. That's what makes us different. So the next time you get lied on, something happened to your finances, something crazy goes on, do what verse 13 says. But rejoice. Because this is what the team members do. Team members rejoice when they go through fiery trials. Now, I'm going to walk you through four different things. Y'all got y'all pen? Because I'm going to give y'all four different things. Because you will fit in one of these four categories. These four categories changed my life. All right. The first category is trials and tribulations. There's four different things that the people on Jesus' team will go through. The first one is trials and tribulations. Number one, trials and tribulations. And let me describe the difference between these because most people, they hear these words, but they don't understand the difference. So trials and tribulations is a period where you are opposed, where you're going through something just so the fruits of the spirit can develop in you. I'm going to say that again. Trials and tribulations is a period of opposition that you go through just so the fruits of the spirit can be manifested in you. Who in here has the Holy Spirit? Okay. In order for the fruits of the spirit to be manifested in your life, you're going to have to go through some trials and tribulation. It's the only way the fruit can grow. You can't just get saved, lift up your hands and say, Lord, I got patience. So let me show you what I mean by that. Mr. Ronda, can you please go to James chapter 1? And I'm going to show you why we have to go through trials and tribulation. Who in here needs some more patience? Oh, we got a lot of liars in here. Jesus. We, <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> Raise your hand if you need some patience. Okay. Now let's look at what James chapter 1 says. Uh, verse 3. Because this is what James is trying to tell you why. So he says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh the patience. So when you said, Lord, make me more like you. The, more, the moment you said, God, I want to, I just want, I want to be just like you, Lord. I just want to, we used to sing that all the time. God says, thank you. Please now enter into trials and tribulations. Because you have nine fruits in there that I got to get out. <laughs> you got love that you got to get out. This is why somebody that you may have loved hurt you. Because now you got to know how to love people who hurt you. Then you have, you got love, joy. Now, let me explain joy. Because joy, people keep, un, keep messing up joy. Joy can only come through trials and tribulations. I got to explain this because you got to understand what joy looks like. Joy is when you could be in the midst of something so crazy and you're still smiling. And the crazy thing is you don't even know why you're smiling. That's how you know that's joy. It's like, why am I so happy and I know hell is happening? So that can only come through trials and tribulations. Then you have peace. Who in here had to go to sleep last night? Now, Jesus shows what peace looked like when he was on the boat and there was a storm. He was knocked out. The boys was going crazy. The disciples. But Jesus had so much peace because he understood about how trials and tribulations work. So for you, and if you want the fruits of the spirit to work in your life, embrace trials and tribulations. So when God sends them your way, he's not sending them your way because he hates you. He's sending them because he's trying to develop those nine fruits of the spirit. Does everybody understand that? All right, now if you want to know what the fruits of the Spirit is, go to Galatians and they'll read to you what those fruits of the Spirit are. But 
Many of you in here is like, Lord, I'm in a trial. But this is the part people don't realize. There is a big difference between a trial and a fiery trial. Mm -mm, this, this is going to get good. Because <laughs> some of you are in a fiery trial. These trials here, if you are a Christian, if you are a believer, I just want you to rejoice because you're going to always have trials and tribulations. So let's rejoice real quick. <laughs> Y'all see them hand claps got low. <laughs> they like, um, yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> but listen, the quicker we embrace it, the better we'll go through this Christian walk. I embrace it because I know this is how the, the fruits come out. I cannot grow no type of fruit physically, an apple or whatever, if it do not go in the ground first, in the dirt. You can't grow it if you don't have the seed in the soil. So for the Christian, the way the fruits are developed is through trial and tribulation. So that's number one. That is one of the things that you are going to ex experience, okay? Now, let me give you the next one. The next one is very fun. Because this is the one I think some of y'all may shout on. Because I think some of y'all is in this one right here. Number two is called test. <laughs> Number two is called test. Number one is what? Who here is in a trial and tribulation? Just raise your hand if you're in a trial. That means there's some fruits of the spirit being developed in you. Okay. Now, number two is a huge one because we're all going to go through number two, but we're going to go through number two at different seasons. Test. This is what a test is. When God allows Satan to reveal to us our commitment to him, he allows Satan to attack us for us to see our commitment to him. Hmm. Test is never for God to see, because he already know it. Have anybody, now, just be honest, we in church don't tell the truth, shame the devil. <laughs> shame that devil. <laughs> if anybody in here, have you ever said, have anybody ever here said something like this? Lord, if you do this for me, I will never do that. And then God did it, and you found yourself biting your tongue. I'm just wondering. I'll turn around. Y'all need to look at you. <laughs> you were tested. Because he already knew that you couldn't handle it. But you just, oh, Lord, you were like, Peter, oh, Lord, I die for you, Jesus. I do. And he looked at him and was like, Peter, just, just, shh. <laughs> so what he does, he allowed that situation to happen to Peter for Peter to see his commitment level. Because Jesus already knew. So when you are in a test, you will go through something for you to see how mature you are. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So I know I, listen, God humbled me in, in, in one situation. I, I was one of those ones. I said, Lord, if you do this for me, there was something I said to the Lord some years ago. I said, Lord, I tell you, if you do this for me, I promise, Lord, I'm going to be happy. I'm going to blah, 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 blah. And guess what? He actually blessed me with it. And I'm going to tell you the God on the shoe, after he blessed me with it, I was like, take it away, Jesus. I can't handle this thing. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> so he tested me to let me know, listen, you're not mature to handle that blessing. It was just a quick blessing that I came in, and it just overwhelmed me. And it, it, it was like maybe, what, three months? of I was like, I can't handle this. This is just a little too much. And I went right back to school again. <laughs> he had to test some character in my, in my fruits of the spirit to handle that. So there are certain things you're praying for right now. Lord, bless me. God says, listen, I'm getting you prepared. I'm about to test you. Now, this is the part that's going to make you happy. When you are about to go through a test, it's always going to happen before public manifestation of ministry. Before you are, when you are tested, it is the, the trumpet to tell you God is about to publicly do something in your life. Y'all want some Bible for that? Please go to Luke chapter 4. Because you will never be tested if God is not about to display you publicly for something. So this is why you're going through a big test right now. Because he is about to blow you up. Look at your neighbor and say, you're about to blow up. So real quick in Luke chapter 4 verse 1. 
And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led. Everybody see that? By who? The devil? By the Spirit into the wilderness, verse 2. Being 40 days tested. Tempted here means tested. Tested of the devil. And in those days, he did eat nothing. And, they, and when they were in it, he asked the word hunger. Now, what took place was the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness for 40 days. Jesus' ministry did not start yet. If you look around verse 11, somewhere around there, it's going to show you that the moment he comes from this test, he immediately starts his public ministry. Immediately. So let me, let me share with you uh, something that had happened to me. I remember back in 2001, I went through something that almost killed me. I'm talking about emotionally. That thing broke my heart. I mean, that thing hit me so, so, so hard to the core. I, that was probably the, 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 the thing that I said to God, this is just a little too much. I go through that in 2001 in March. And God promoted me that summer to do something that was beyond what I ever prayed for. In the same season. But what he did with the thing in March was to test me to see if can you handle what's about to happen in June. It wasn't I got this big blessing and then a test. The test was can I forgive the person who just did this? Because I can't stand in front of anybody and preach love if I got hate in my heart. I can't talk about worship if I don't know if I can't get a breakthrough myself. So how he was going to try to put me in front of all these people and travel the country if I was sitting here with unforgiveness in my heart. So he broke me, and that thing, it bothered me so bad because I didn't understand the test. This is why when you're going through a test, he is looking at how do you handle this because you are about to be promoted. And the promotion is so big that when you get in the promotion, you will actually be like, this, that test was all for this. So recently, a, a, a gentleman who I was mentoring, this was, this was maybe four, five years ago, four or five, maybe six years ago, gentleman who I was mentoring was at his church, and something took place where the pastor said something to him. And this young man got offended by his pastor was literally like, he a man just like me. I don't like, I don't like, he was, that was disrespectful. He told me to do this and do this. And all the pastor told him to do was, I don't think you should do it right now. And he just got offended. He was just like, no, I'm going to do what God called me to do. I ain't listening to nobody, blah, 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 blah. And he came to me and told me what was happening. And I told that young man, I said, you being tested. I said, shut your mouth and listen to your pastor. And he went back to his church and submitted. And guess what happened three months later? He got called for an international ministry three months later. And guess who gave him the blessings? His pastor. So he was three months away from his promotion and almost failed. And God has been sending little small stuff just to see if you're ready for this big thing you want. So raise your hand if you want to test. Please look at your neighbor and say, you're about to be promoted. Let me show you another test real quick before I give you the third one. Let's go to Genesis chapter 22. Genesis 22 verse 1. So what is the first thing we go through? What's, what's number one, y'all? Trials and tribulations. What's number two? All right, good. So look at, look at Genesis 22 and 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt. Y'all see that word tempt? That's test. That God did test Abraham and said unto him, behold, he said, Abraham, behold, here am I. Verse 2. Now look at this. He said, take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou what? He didn't say who you hate because that wouldn't have been a test. <laughs> he said, give me the thing you love the most. Closest to your heart. Lord, have mercy. I feel like I need to say that again. The thing closest to your heart. He said, I want that. 
just to see if you go be willing. He said, whom thou lovest and get thee to the land of Moriah and offer him, which is the thing he loved, for a burnt offering, which means you go kill him, upon one of the mountains, which I tell you. Look at verse 3. Look what happened, y'all. And Abraham rose up in the morning. That means Abraham said, yes, Lord. It didn't say Abraham stayed in the bed and prayed. Because <laughs> that's what we would have did. <laughs> we would have stayed in the bed and said, oh, that devil. That devil has been speaking to me about killing my son. I'm just going to lay in here and just, and, and just keep rebuking him all day. That's what we would have did. <laughs> Abraham got up and said, all right, I'm being tested. Let me pass this thing. Let me get this thing out the way. He takes a boy who's about, um, how old are you? Can you come up here for a second? He's 15. This is exactly the size of this, this young man. He, this is a football star right here. So Abraham grabs this boy, and he takes him up. And now the boy understands about offering and sacrifice. But people keep thinking Isaac was this little, he was like this. He was a teenager. And you want to know why? Because there's a scripture that says, and he put the wood on his son's back. So if he can put the wood on his son's back and make his son carry it, he can't be no little child. He got to have some muscles and be tall enough to carry this wood. So the son is walking up here carrying the stuff, and Abraham said, listen, I love this boy. And Abraham, this is why he was called a friend of God, because Abraham knew something about God that we don't know. Abraham had such a revelation before time that if I have to offer this up, either one or two things is going to happen. Either God is going to replace him, or he's going to give me something else at the last minute because of a promise God told me. So Abraham goes totally by faith. He goes totally by knowing, I think this is a test. Because if Abraham didn't think this was a test, Abraham would have been crying. Abraham would have been like, son, we ain't going nowhere. But because Abraham understand that God does test people, Abraham said, come on, son. They go three days, and they're walking up. The son is like, okay, dad, here we are. I don't see no meat. <laughs> um, that wood, that fire kind of hot. <laughs> That's a pretty big altar. <laughs> He like, Dad, um, what we go do with this? And he look at his he look at his grown boy and looking at this thing and saying, Okay, I thought God maybe would have sent me a chicken or something by this time, but since I don't got nothing, all right, son, get up here. Now at this time, this boy is probably sitting there saying to his dad, Okay, dad, now listen, I know you hear from God. You know, and I know you was drinking some of that. That, that whiskey last night, and um, I was just wondering if that was, if you got a little tipsy on one of them, one of them cups, because the way you looking at me right now, and all God was doing, he and we all know that he didn't do it, but all God was doing was watching to see can you really be the father of many nations? Because that was the promotion. Because if I can't pass this, if I can't be a father of him, Lord have mercy, then I can't be a father where the sand, where, where, where the, uh, the children is more than the stars you see in heaven. This was the test. And after he passed this test, the angel says, Abraham, don't do it. You passed. And Abraham said, whew, thank God. Then there was a ram in the bush. Abraham grabbed the ram, put it on the altar, kill him. Him and the boy go back, and Abraham now is saying, okay, promotion time. I'm about to be the father of many nations right now. And the son is happy, as y'all see. <laughs> he real happy they both walking back together. Because Abraham was being tested. He wasn't in a trial. He was in a test. You got to know the difference, because when you enter it, it's going to change how you rejoice. Mm -hmm. So number one is what? Number two? Y'all ready for number three? We got two more, then we're going to be gone. Now, the third one is cross. Oh, Jesus. Cross. The thing Jesus died on. Please turn with me. To Matthew chapter 10, verse 38. 
I'm so glad I passed those tests that I had to pass. Because there's some blessings in my life right now that I'm able to enjoy because I had to pass some tests. And I'm just so great. And there were some tests that I failed that I wish I could have went back and passed. But I'm learning now that when I'm being tested to get on my knees and say, God, let me make it through this thing. And we all have had tests in school. You know what exams feel like. You were studying. Now watch this. You were studying months before the test because you knew a test was coming, right? So let me just give you a prophecy. Start studying for your test because it's coming. Don't let that scare you. You're on the team, remember? All team members got to take this. <laughs> oh, see, I, I, I thought I was waiting for somebody to rejoice because remember First Peter said we're supposed to rejoice when that? Now, I ain't see one rejoice. Uh, the rejoicing just got zapped. <laughs> you, and, and trust me, you go rejoice, but you go rejoice because you know that you go past. You know why you know you go past? Because you got the Holy Spirit, who is your helper. He's your counselor. He the one that's going to say, no, don't study that. Start, start studying this. And you're going to be like, God, well, God, why am I all of a sudden I'm studying about anger? And you don't know why, but you're just starting to feel like you're supposed to be reading scriptures about anger. That's the Holy Spirit saying, get ready, because somebody about to make you angry. This is how the Holy Spirit works. He's be preparing you for stuff before you even get there. So number three is cross. So this is what Matthew 10, 38 says. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Now, let me explain what the cross is. The cross is a good one. Oh, Jesus. This one, I'm going to be honest. Um, this is one that I don't like. Can I be honest with y'all? I mean, I can sit up here and lie and be like, oh, I love the cross. No, I'm gonna be I don't like this one. I like tests. I like trials and tribulations. But the cross, the reason why I like the cross is because you are responsible for your own. Every last one of you got your own cross. And as much as I want to help you carry it, that's why I don't like this one because none of y'all can help me with this one. This is the one I got to bear by myself. And it's moments where I don't want to carry it no more. And every now and then, God will send a Simon Serene to help you, but it is something you still responsible for. So let me give you some examples of what a cross. This cross is one thing that you have to willingly get up, give up that is painful. One thing that you have to willingly give up that is painful. You notice he didn't say he that taketh not his crosses. He didn't say crosses. He said cross. Please do not think you got to carry 20 crosses. Even Jesus didn't carry 20 crosses. He had one cross he had to carry. And guess what? You got one heavy cross that you, you, the person sitting next to you, got to carry. And sometimes this is the thing that we want to put down and God saying, I'm sorry, but this is yours. Look at your neighbor and say, this is yours. So it is so custom made for you. This is the cross. Let me tell you, let me give you a secret of how you know it's your cross. It's the very thing that you are afraid to ask somebody to pray with you about. It's so personal that if somebody else knew that you had to carry it, they may look at you like you're crazy. You can't even go and say, um, excuse me, can you pray with me? I, I have this situation. You have to call it a situation. That's how personal it is to you. Because if you say what it is, everybody in the church will be talking about your cross. <laughs> so this is why I don't like this one because guess what? You feel lonely with this one. <laughs> Every day you carry this thing with you and, and you've been saying like, well, Paul, Lord, Lord, can you remove this thing? And he said, well, my grace is sufficient. Your, my strength is made perfect in this, in this weakness. He didn't say in all your, he said in this one. So I'm going to give you one second to think about your one cross. And this thing is something you got to be nailed to, which means you can't run from it. Even if you prayed, it is connected to you. And it was given to you for identification purposes. <laughs> To be on the team, 
Y'all know what y'all's is yet? Man, I don't see no rejoicing no more. Whatever happened to all that hand clap? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> this cross, I'm going to tell you right now. So this is why I don't understand. This is one thing I don't understand about God's people. I don't understand why when someone, when somebody's cross is exposed, we like to laugh at it or, or talk about it. I don't understand that. As if you don't got one. I don't understand that part. There's not one of you in here that don't got something that you go to God and say, Jesus, this thing is heavy. And then we come in here and praise the Lord, everybody. And then somebody's cross get exposed and you all laugh. Oh, I cannot believe that they carrying that cross. Look at that. And you got a big one on your back. Because the one you have if you told, if it, right now, if God showed all of our crosses on the screen, we will all run out of here and say, Lord Jesus, these people saved in this church. <laughs> because you're carrying it every day. While you speaking in tongues, you're still carrying it. While you at work, you're carrying it. This is why he needs your mind free, so you can have the energy to carry it. <laughs> if Jesus' mind was not sold out, in Gethsemane. He wouldn't have had the energy to carry that cross. Because guess what happened with this cross? This is the part I need y'all to see. He didn't just carry it. He carried it while he was beaten. So it wasn't like he was carrying this thing after he came out of a gym. He was literally carrying this thing while people was lying on him. Mm -mm -mm. Spitting on him. He was carrying it. Who in here been lied on recently? You still have to carry it. Who in here had something tragic happen to you recently? And God says, I still need you to carry it. Because the cross is the identifier that you are on this team. He said, you can't even be on my team unless you pick it up. You can be talented. Because there's a lot of football players that's talented that's not playing football. You know why? Because they cannot get on their cross and work as a team. Those guys on the team, if, if you, and one thing I love about football, when one guy get injured on the field, all the guys come out. And they all kneel around him. And you know why they do that? Somebody, somebody tell me, why do you think the other football players come out and kneel around the guy who get injured? Because it could have been them. So that's why the scripture says, he who are spiritual, restore such one, lest a worse thing Come on, you. So he says, listen, if you see somebody get hit, you better go over and grab them and be like, Father, in the name of Jesus, please, Lord, restore him, restore him, restore him. God said, you're the spiritual one. That's teamwork. You don't go over there and kick the man and say, how, can, how in the world did you get tackled? That's what we, why would we do that? Why? If my sister right here, I'm just saying, I'm just going to use it now, this is not the truth. And my sister right here, and this is the truth, if she came up in here and she was like, Elder Nate, I messed up. I, I had a situation happen, and I'm now pregnant out of wedlock. Let's just say that happened. Let's just say, not, it ain't going to happen. We believe that in the name of Jesus. But, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> but let's just say, if she came in the church and that did happen, I'm not saying that you, all of y'all on the team should go like this. Not saying, now trust me, the reason why we need to do that is because you don't understand that the devil got somebody sitting up just for you. And if you ain't careful, you're going to be sitting up at church talking about... Why are these people judging me? Well, they judging you because you judged that one. So when you carry this cross, you got to look at everybody and say, they got a cross. And I, I'm going to be honest, I can't carry yours. Yours is too heavy for me. I commend you. I heard some of y'all have shared some of the stuff y'all got to carry. I'm like, listen, I respect you because I, I couldn't do it. 
And God knew I couldn't handle it. That's why he says he would never put more on you than you can bear. Because he knows what you can carry. And I'm going to tell you right now, I know none of y'all can carry what I had to. It's for me. And I accepted that. That's why I don't tell none of y'all my business. <laughs> I don't do it because I'm trying to be good. It's like, why would you need it? Who cares? Your cross is made out of wood. Mine is made out of wood too. But I embraced it, and that's the only thing I go in my secret place. You know, that's why it says, blessed is the man, uh, he that dwelleth in the secret place. That secret place is where you want to take your cross to every day. Because that's the only person who understands your cross. He understands the weight of the cross. So he's the only one who you can go in there and say, God, can you give me strength today? I don't feel like carrying this thing today. And guess what? He will say, come on, you can do it. Because the cross is always for other people's edification. Did Jesus die on the cross for himself? Who did he die for? So guess who cross yours is for? This is why you got to carry it, because it's definitely not for you. What's number one? What's the first one we got to go through? Second one? Third one. Who in here happy about your cross? <laughs> Let me ask you this. Who, who in here are leaving today? And you're ready to take a different perspective about your cross. Who willing to help other people pray for other people's crosses? This is why we should never ignore prayer because you have so much stuff to pray for. If I pray for everybody in here crosses, that's going to take me the whole year of 2019. So I should never have time where I don't know how to pray. If I thought about all the things Elder Archie has to carry I can pray just for all the crosses he carried. I can pray for him probably for, I mean, for like an hour or three days. All the stuff he, he had to deal with. The trials and tribulations, the tests and the cross that he carried. These mothers who sitting here with all this wisdom, they carried a lot of, they went through a lot of trials, tests, and crosses. And they're sitting here praying for a lot of us young folk. We thank God for y'all. Because y'all show us what it looked like to endure. So we did the cross. So now let me give you the last one. Now remember, your cross is not for you. It's always to help other people. Now the, this last one is the one I want to get to because all of the team members have to take this last one. The last one is the one we read back in 1 Peter chapter 4, which is the fiery trial. The fiery trial. So 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 again. So when it says in verse 1 Peter 4 and 12, beloved or team member, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though something strange has happened unto you. Now, I'm going to just use two examples of what this fiery trial looked like and then we're going to finish. What a fiery trial is, it's an intense situation caused by your stand for Jesus. So this is something that happens to you because you're doing the right thing. Uh-oh. Lord Jesus. This is the thing that you are doing something right. And hell happens. This is not the thing that you did something crazy and you're just reaping it. That ain't what I'm talking about. This is something where you literally did the right thing and you went into what we call the fiery trial. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Joseph. Joseph was tempted by Potiphar's wife. And he did the right thing. And he ran. And his running of doing, which because the scripture says flee youthful lust. This, he did exactly what the word said and it caused him to go into a fiery trial. Fiery trial is when you feel like um, you need somebody to vindicate you because you know that you're innocent. I just heard something recently that just blew my mind about the man who was in prison for 25 years and they just found out he didn't do it. No. Do you know what could be going on in that man's heart? 25 years for something you didn't do? You know you didn't do it and you're telling everybody, I didn't do it. But they, ah, the proof is saying it. And you're like, that was not me. I didn't have nothing to do with this. And all of a sudden, God still allows you to go through this. That's a fiery trial. So Joseph doing the right thing, we would have told people because he did the right thing, wow, he was able to get promoted right away. 
but it led him to jail. <clears throat> That's a fiery trial. Example number two, Daniel. Daniel did the right thing. They put out a decree, nobody should be praying to no other gods. And Daniel just did what he was normally doing in his own room, just over there praying. And they saw Daniel praying. They said, hey, king, we found somebody who's trying to be disobedient. They take Daniel, throw him in the lion's den for doing the right thing. And guess what? God didn't take him out right away. Then the one that I love the most is the three Hebrew boys. They said, we ain't going to bow because we know the God we worship. We know the God we serve. And guess what it cost them to be in the fiery furnace? So with a show of hands, who in here is in the fiery trial? You know you did the right thing and you're and you the one burning. <laughs> who in here burning right now for doing the right thing? Oh, just a few of us. Okay, cool. Well, the rest of y'all, y'all pray for the ones, the, the ones who's, in the, who's in the hot fire right now. Just pray for them because guess what? They're not, and this is where we mess up because we don't, a lot of us don't use discernment. When a person goes to a fiery trial, we always think they did it. If they didn't, if they would have just did that, that wouldn't have happened. No, 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 no. There is certain stuff. I am in a fiery trial. I've been in a fiery trial for almost, uh, let me see. This will be 18 years. And I, I'll, share, I'll share with you mine. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've, many of you who may not know, but I, I, have, I have a son. And, uh, when my, and I used to, many of you probably remember him, but my son was uh, with me all the time here. And at the age of three, um, my son was taken from me. And I have never seen my boy since. And you see me smiling, right? Now, you, want, you know why I want to tell you that? It's because I want to show you that if I made you believe that everything was lined up in my life that makes me so joyful, I would be lying to you. So I have to show you that sometimes things happen to good people. Because I did nothing wrong. So when, when I'm talking to you about fiery trial, and I'm up here preaching to you, and guess what? If you ask me, well, how's your boy doing? And people say, how's your son doing? Oh, I'd be like, he's fine. He's blessed. Now, y'all see that joy that be on me? Remember I was talking to y'all about joy and the fruits of the spirit earlier? That's what that is. Fiery trials, you don't make sense to you. I still don't understand what happened. I really don't understand. Mothers, I don't understand what happened. But guess what? Guess what the Holy Spirit told me? It'll be all right. Because if you only think that the only people that will go through fiery trials is people in the Bible. Look at your neighbor and say the story still continues with you. <laughs> He's still grabbing people in 2019 and throwing you in pits. And you like, why am I in this pit? Person just got up and left your marriage. They just walked out of you. You like, what happened? I was a good wife. I was a good husband. What happened? You have no, you did everything right and they left you. How do you explain that? <laughs> she said, hey, it's supposed to go. <laughs> but seriously, this is what, fiery trials is, is tricky because fiery trials will make you look like you the devil. Fiery trials will make it look like, oh, you was irresponsible and you could have been doing everything right. And guess what? The person still left you and then said it was your fault. The court says, nah, you can't have it. Give it to the person who really ain't, don't want the person. And you got to still serve God with a smile on your face. So I'm standing here as a testimony that, get less, guess what? When the Hebrew boys got in the fire, they were actually in it, y'all. In it. With the heat. And the scripture says, there was no stench of smoke. Who in here would have ever thought that I... I was going through that situation because you don't smell the scent on me, do you? You know why you don't smell the scent? Because I got the Holy Ghost on the inside of me. <laughs> I sleep at night. I got peace. I got joy. <laughs> Guess what? Because I know my God must have led me into that fiery trial and he the one who had to lead me out. What good is it of, of saying we trust God if he never gives us experience to show it? 
So when I'm sitting here talking to you about fiery trials, fiery trial is something you just walk and smiling. And it all happened at a moment, y'all, when uh, it, it happened so, so quick that I was still, it took me almost five years to catch up that the fact that this is real. Because in one day you could be smiling, oh, everything's going great. And next thing you know it, you get a call. One call just shift everything. And you're like, what just happened? One call, you were just smiling with a person, and one accident, just take them out. And you're like, why them? Why the person who was a loving person, you, you take them, but the person who I've been praying for you to kill, they still walking down the street. <laughs> oh, I didn't say that. I'm sorry. Lord, Lord forgive me. <laughs> The one I was hoping in my spirit that you were kind of, <laughs> you let them walking down Jefferson Street smiling. <laughs> you know, the one I was, the one when I was hugging, I was kind of trying to, you know, push them a little harder than everybody else. You let them live. And the one that was doing good, you took. And then you still go to sleep at night. That don't make sense. This is how you know those who got the power of God in them because there is no way I could be sleeping. There is no way I could be getting up trying to preach to y'all with any hurt or things in my heart. If God did not brought me, bring me this, I would have had a nervous breakdown. But this is what test looks like. This is what fiery trials look like because he's trying to let you know you are on the team. So I said all that because I, and I'm going to tell you right now, not one of y'all come up to me afterwards and say, oh, oh it's going to be okay. I don't want to hear that. I already know it's all right. I don't want no sadness around. Don't come around me. Oh, we pray. I, listen, pray from there. I'm so happy with my life right now because God has kept me. You should have came about 10 years ago. I needed it then because I was crying a lot. But now, I ain't a tear coming out my eye. My wife will tell you, I'll be, I'll be knocked out. It's because I had to put my trust in him and say, God, if this is the fiery trial that I have to go through, hey, as long as you're in this fire with me, I'm good. And he's in there with me. That's why he's blessing me more now than I've ever been blessed because he's trying to show himself through me through this fiery test. Now, watch. Let's go to verse 13. We're about to close. Verse 13 says, but... Rejoice. This is why I'm happy. Because I understand being a team member, you're gonna, everybody's going to have one good fiery trial that you cannot explain to people. So stop doing it. Stop trying to tell them, well, well, well maybe if I would have did this, this would have happened. No. This is why I'm happy. Because I understand being a team member, you're gonna, everybody's going to have one good fiery trial that you cannot explain to people so stop doing it stop trying to tell them well 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 if maybe if i would have did this this would have happened no no some stuff you just you just chosen to go through it but rejoice in as much ye are partakers of christ's suffering remember christ went through something that didn't make sense you're gonna go through something that makes sense not not that, no, that don't make sense then when his glory look at this when his glory not yours shall be revealed ye shall be also with exceeding joy. The next scripture. Verse 14. Now watch this. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. On their part, the people who threw you in the fiery trial, he is evil spoken of. So people will look at you and say, oh, I thought you was a believer. How can you be going through this if you was a Christian? So he is going to be speaking evil from the person who throws you in the fire. But look what he says. But on your part, who is glorified? He is glorified by you being in that heat. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm about to, this is going to be your test. To let you know if you really, really on on this team, because everybody on this team. So again, like I said, that was just one situation, one fire trial I went through. I went through many different things, but that's something that still I'm walking in the fire today. So every day, guess what? I pray for him every day. I think about him every day. I'm always seeing blessings to him. I am blessing him every day. I've, God has blessed my son. I love him so much. And guess what? I can get to this point only because of the Spirit of God. I can't do it in my own strength. So every day I'm walking in the fire, it's funny because when they saw the Hebrew boys walking in the fire, they said there's somebody in there walking with him. 
That's where the testimony came. They said, this guys, these guys ain't burning. Sister Leslie ain't lose her mind yet. I don't understand. This brother here is dancing, and none of us know what is happening in his life. And we, people who may know him may be like, how is he able to dance like that with all he's going through? How was Sister Sue Lynn able to praise him that hard with all the hell she had to go through? How was Sister, Sister Nicole get her praise on every week if people can see her in her fire? God says on their way, when they see it, he's evil spoken of. But God is up there smiling because you're in that fiery trial. So number one is trials and tribulations. Number two is tests. Number three is cross. And number four, fiery trial. Let us all stand right now. These four different things you are going to need. The Holy Spirit told me last night. He said, the reason why I'm going to give you this to speak to my people is because they are all in situations that don't make sense. They are experiencing things that they are praying. This is what he told me, so I need you to listen. He said, they are praying to me about certain things that they, they, that he, they want me to move. But he said, but there's some stuff that they need education on which one I put them in. And he said, I'm given, I need them to hear this message because they need to have a, this is what he said, they need to have a different attitude about what they're going through. This is what he spoke to me about everybody in this room. He said, whatever you are going through, change your attitude. Some of us is in it longer than we're supposed to because of the attitude. Some of us is in a trial and test. He says, embrace that. That's actually working for you because you're becoming more fruitful. He says, some of you are in the test because you are about to be promoted so big that he just want to make sure you can handle all of that's about to happen. Then some of you right now are carrying these crosses and you are, now listen, let me say this. You cannot rebuke a cross. And some of you have been saying, Satan, I rebuke you. Satan, I rebuke you. And it ain't going nowhere because it's not Satan. It's a cross. And the quicker you know that, you're going to stop bringing the devil into the cross situation and just say, listen, this is just something I just got to deal with. So the moment I knew what my cross was, I have never brought Satan's name up in it no more. It's just something I realized this is mine that I got to carry as my identification. And then the fiery trial, this is the one that I, I felt like I wanted to do last because I feel some of you are in it right now. Some of you have asked yourself and some of you have been falsely accused. Some of you, have gone, I, God showed me somebody at your job, somebody here, you're at work, and the people at your job is coming against you. This is all the fiery tests, the fiery trial that you're going through. He don't want you to leave here today with this mindset of that you're doing something wrong. This particular thing you're going through, you're going through it because you've been chosen to go through the fiery test. You're doing the right thing. That's why you went through this. So before we go today, we're, gonna, we're just going to leave. We're, we're not going to do anything major, but we're just going to just all rejoice today and when I say rejoice I don't mean you have to jump up leap run but I just want you to just put on a continent put on a mindset put on a game a team mindset that listen I'm in this team and guess what I gotta work I gotta prepare myself I gotta prepare myself for the things that's ahead God is preparing us there's some things that you're about to enter into your life to become more like Jesus and he just wanted us to be educated today so you could be equipped so just please close your eyes real quick